Michelle Barland Smith speak. Um, spent about three weeks. She's a retired airline executive that um, she and her husband retired to kind of an upscale trailer park that was about 200 yards from where the spill occurred. And the um, park had about 160 people living there. And she said that 10 of them have died since the spill, and only one was elderly, considered high risk. Um, she said that there were two women that were pregnant when the spill occurred, and their babies were born with deformities and major health issues. Uh, she said that almost all of the people that were that close to the spill had uh, either upper respiratory or uh, gastrointestinal or neurological problems from The other thing is, that just was mind-boggling to us is that Enbridge has not had to release what was in their quote-unquote proprietary chemicals and they know what's in the heavy metals because it ended up you know sinking in the water but the stuff that was in the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons that uh, dissipated in the air they don't know what they breathed for two days before they were evacuated and they still haven't had to tell these people what they were exposed to. That was the Kalamazoo? Yeah, it was Line 6B. It was Lakehead 6B that was owned by Enbridge uh, two years ago, um, on July 25th. <laughs> yes, which has barely been two years. You know, I don't think uh, it got the publicity that it did because the BP spill over shattered that. Well, Michelle Barna-Smith was one of the first ones reporting it to CNN, taking pictures, sending them to CNN, and they were going, what is this? Because they hadn't reported it. They hadn't turned it in. But uh, this is the area that Kellogg's and a lot of the cereal companies have their cereal factories. And not only that, but they also had a box factory just down. They used the water from the Kalamazoo to make their boxes. And she was saying that um, because the smell was so heavy in the air from the chemicals, that people were opening up their cereal and getting nauseated, and they had to recall all of these boxes because the smell was in the cardboard so strong that was in their cereal. Um, so, yeah, a lot of things that we never heard on the news, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's been a pretty big cover-up, actually. And there's a lot of YouTubes. John Bullenbaugh, have you heard of him? He was the whistleblower that worked for Enbridge. And he was uh, a manager. He was making about 2000 a week. Uh, working for Enbridge, and he was part of the group cleaning it up. And he was over the people cleaning it up. And so he went out one day to an area that they were, his group, his crew, was supposed to be cleaning. And he saw an area that looked reclaimed. I mean, it looked nice. Plants growing. And he thought, this is amazing. And then he walked out on it, and he said it was like a trampoline because they had covered it with this material and then they had put plants on top of it. And so he was walking on top of it, and he was the whistleblower that started, I mean, he lost his job, they fired him, because he wouldn't shut up about it. He was saying, you're not cleaning this up, you know, but he has a lot of videos now Good. about this. John Bellin? John Bellinbaugh. Bellin what? Uh, Bellinbaugh, B-O-L-E-N-B-A-U-G-H. And this morning, a friend of ours, Adrian Van, Van Dillen, is coming out. And he went up there, um, along with some others from East Texas, on the way to the action at the end of August uh, in D.C. They went up on a biodiesel bus to see this spill, and they met with John Bellenbaugh. And they went out there on the county roads to look at it and Enbridge was blocking the road, and Enbridge called the Sheriff's Department, who immediately came out and said, if you take any more pictures, you're under arrest. This was a county road. Yeah, look up John Bondow and look up Michelle Barland Smith, because they have a lot out on YouTube. Okay. And those, um, she and her husband, too, have really done a lot toward trying to get this out and documenting. And Dr. And, Ricky uh, Ott said there was 11 people yeah. that this girl that lived in the trailer park had told her about, so I don't know about right. this 11th she person. She told us 10, but it's okay. very possible. He said that um, one person, had a, he had a cut on his leg that was a minor cut, but because of the bacteria that they were exposed to, that he ended up having his leg amputated because it never would heal up mm -hmm. and spread into a massive infection that they had to amputate. Uh, 
Yeah. Something else she was telling us is that they cleared out after two or three days. They cleared out. They evacuated this trailer park finally after they had already breathed all this stuff. But they moved in to the trailer park, the people, to clean it up. Then to this highly toxic area, they put the cleanup workers there. Yeah. Oh. So they were exposed to, yeah. Yeah. That's so sad. Nikki Odd, I just read a book that she wrote called uh, Sound, Truth, and Corporate Myths. She was there in 89 when the Exxon Valdez spilled into Prince William Sound. She also did the BP. Dr. Ricky, Ricky Ott. Ott. Yeah, okay. Dr. Ott. She was actually there in Prince William Sound in 89. Uh, doing research when uh, the Exxon Valdez destroyed the sound there, the Prince William Sound. And so her book is talking about how they get away with this because the people that they use to clean it up, also on the Kalamazoo, are usually the people that are already working in the industry. And then when they have uh, these debilitating health problems, they say, prove that it's from the cleanup. Mm -hmm. Prove that it's from being exposed to this because you've been exposed for 20 years because of your job. I saw a video where she said yeah. that in the BP uh, disaster, they were trying to um, say that the control group or the, the cleanup workers weren't any more exposed than the people that lived on the fence line or the beach line. And what they did was they made comparisons about um, their health effects, but forgot how she worded it. But the deal was they didn't, they didn't talk about that they're still having, both groups are still having yeah. the same exactly. health effects. Exactly. So that's why they didn't have any differences right. between that's both right. groups. They're still sick. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> And you know, there's still, the pattern is you send these people out because they can't do their job. Like with the BP, they can't go out with their fishing boats. So they're out of a job, they can't feed their family. So you, they say, well, we can use you to clean it up, but they don't give them the protection to do it. And so then they come down. Have you talked to Sherry? Um, she's at, she, her husband has major health problems because he was one of the ones that was used to clean it up, the BP spot. And we, she actually uh, was in D.C. for the um, action at the end of August. On that we all, we all Horn, and yeah. Keystone yes. Rolling. And we're here in Texas today trying to prepare for the uh, XL pipeline protest uh, for the Texas area. Yeah.